beyond the headlines for informed analysis of major political stories in Nigeria. I am Olajumoke Olatiji. As the May 29 inauguration date for the new government approaches, many politicians, groups and political parties are condemning the call for interim government. A faction of the All Progressives Congress APC in Delta State has expelled its governorship candidate in the March 18 election. Senator Ove Omar Gege over alleged anti-party activities, misappropriation of funds and others. On the interview segment for today, we will examine the South-South quest for Senate presidency with a leading member of the South-South Solidarity Group and the Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressives Congress APC, Joseph Wyatt Jr. as our guest. Welcome to Politics Tonight. Stay with us. We will be... Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. A, a faction of the All Progressives Congress APC in Delta State has expelled its governorship candidate in the March 18 election, Senator Ovie Omar Gege, over alleged anti-party activities, misappropriation of funds, among others. The expulsion of the deputy president of the Senate was announced in a letter signed by the chairman, Ulebo Isaac, on behalf of the state executive committee. In the letter, the Delta APC stated that it unanimously resolved and adopted the expulsion by the executive committee of the Oregon Ward and Ugbeli North local government chapters. The party accused the governorship candidate of illegally hijacking the APC in the state and controlling its activities without consultation. They attributed the party's poor performance to the alleged alliance Senator Omar Gege formed with the Labour Party during the presidential election. President Muhammadu Buhari, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, and the 44 ministers in the Federal Executive Council are expected to commence declaration of their assets ahead of the May 29 handover. The special advisor to the chairman of the Code of Conduct Bureau, CCB, on general duties, most of our most to the LDA governors and their cabinet members, National Assembly and State Assembly members, and local government chairmen will equally obtain the assets declaration forms from the CCB and submit the same in line with the 1999 constitution as amended. This complies with the provision of the constitution which stipulates that all public officers shall declare their assets and liabilities on the assumption of office and at the end of their tenure of office. However, the president-elect Bola Tinubu, the vice president-elect Kashim Shatima and 28 incumbent governors and their cabinet members as well as the state assembly members had three months to submit their asset forms to the CCB. A Plata State High Court sitting in Joss has reinstated the impeached former Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Nuhu Habok. Justice Nafisa Tumusa of the State High Court 6 declared or delivered the judgment in just the state 24 state lawmakers in October 2021 following a vote of no confidence passed against him. In its judgment, the court upheld submissions of the complainants that the impeachment was illegal and therefore null and void. The court awarded the sum of 1.5 million naira as the cost of appearance and 138,000 naira as the cost of filing the matter against the defendants. All right, let's take a short break. And when we return, it will be time to speak with our guest for today, Joseph Wyas Jr., who is a leading member of the South-South Solidarity Group, as well as the APC Presidential Campaign Council on the South-South's quest for Senate presidency. Please stay with us. ...of the 10th National Assembly in June. And according to feelers, they have kick-started their campaign activities, and particularly South-South senators are saying it is their turn. And that would be the crux of our discussion tonight. Joining me to have this conversation is the member of the South-South Solidarity Group and the APC Presidential Campaign Council, Joseph Wyas Jr., on the South-South quest for Senate presidency. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. All right. So before we go into the nitty gritty of today's uh, discussion, let me get your views on the just concluded election. So as a member of the APC PCC, how will you describe the outcome of the presidential election? Well, I think it was uh, it lived up to the billing. It was a worthy exercise, at least 
four of Nigeria's finest came into the middle of the ring. They slug it out. We, we know all of them. Uh, we heard what they had to say. And at the end of the day, um, the winner emerged. It has to be like that always, that one person will emerge. So it was a successful exercise. It wasn't a selection process. It was an election. We can herald uh, the um, increase of our democracy as a result of that. So did you expect uh, the nail-biting outcome with the two uh, top candidates winning 12 states each and the third best winning 11 states and the FCT? Well, I think they're all God's children. If God uh, divided it like that, I don't think that uh, there's anything much ado about that. I don't think uh, there's much ado about anything. The, the race is over. The, the winner has been declared. And uh, the rest of us Nigerians were anxious to get on to business as what has brought me here today to share my thoughts, our thoughts with you and uh, our Nigerian brethren. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, describing the performance of the APC generally in the South-South in the presidential election and the governorship election where you won your state. I, sorry, I didn't hear the question. Can you repeat the question? I said, how will you describe the performance of the APC generally in the South-South in the election and the governorship election where you won your state? Well, I, I think that um, Cross River should be proud uh, and happy to be asked that question. We um, were previously a, a, a state uh, bound, bound in darkness, bound in slavery, held so by, uh, by uh, the, uh, the PDP party and uh, the bravery of our governor who decided that his people have to be emancipated, have to be set free. Um, he took the bold step. It was a very bold step, very brave step by him. As a result, um, we can see today that Cross River followed him. They, they followed with leadership. And with the event of the, uh, the governor-elect, um, Senator Basse Otu, uh, you can see that it was God's doing. The whole state is in harmony. The whole state is in peace. Everybody, every, the South mantra of many cross Rivarians, And it was, uh, I believe, a landslide he had at the end of the day. So, well, yes, oh, we're happy. Great. So, was there any time you were scared that your party may not win the uh, presidential election and also retain Cross River State? That, that never entered our mind. Uh, APC went through a thick process where the best of the best came out. Um, any, any of the, uh, the, um, the aspirants that came out would have likely have had something close to the same result because the best of the best are in APC. And let's not forget that APC is backed by the best supporters, by the best political workers. It's, it's, no, it's no accident. It's no accident that at the end of the day, APC um, came out on top. It's, it's, it's no accident. Uh, we feel blessed. We don't feel lucky. We feel blessed because we worked for this. We worked and we prayed hard for this success. So a lot of uh, your party members, chieftains actually, have attributed the party's victory to so many factors. But for you, what factors do you think enabled the APC to win the governorship election, especially in Cross River State, for the very first time? Well, um, the record of APC the last eight years, if you're going to be honest or, tr or truthful, you would say that... Um, this government has tried. Um, we have been through some trying times in the last eight years, not of anybody's doing. For example, the corona years were there. Um, the, um, the economy, um, by no doing of uh, the APC, wasn't uh, 
could be better. And despite, despite uh, the trying times, this government did more with less, did more with less. I mean, just take, a, just take my state, for example. I'm so glad you uh, asked me that question because in our, in our state, there's a, um, the, the major uh, infrastructure, the major, the major infrastructure is a bridge that's, uh, that goes over the um, cr uh, Cross River Bridge at uh, Ecom, at Ecom. And that bridge, when it, was, when it was built, it was built when I was a, when I was a kid. It was built just a little bit after the war. Um, I believe it was my dad as commissioner of works and transport that even had a hand in building that bridge. Um, that bridge uh, was the sole um, uh, thing that we could point to in Cross River to say, look, we count in this nation because that bridge is quite a feat. If you go and, go and stand in the middle of the bridge and you look down, you almost lose yourself because the water is far down. It's far down. Now, um, Buhari built a second bridge during his tenure. And that second bridge was completed in no time at all. And believe it or not, the country is not talking about it. The country is not talking about it because it's, it's a normal feat. This government has done... So many know that, that, yes, this government can hold its head high, that it has done a lot, and of course, it set the stage for Nigerians hoping for more, believing that uh, APC are just the team to do it, are just the team to do it. If I had time, I'd go on and give you even more examples, but I won't, I would spare you. Ask you now that the APC has control of Cross River State, what should we expect? Sweetness. <laughs> That's what we call our Victor, our, our Victor, our governor elect, Senator Basioto. Sweetness. He's a, uh, he's a fantastic leader, and we know that he has the capacity uh, to, to do what it takes. Um, uh, our governor, Ayade, has given him a, a gigantic stepping foot, and there's no reason why he cannot do all that it takes to take Cross River to the next level. Please, I'm not here about Cross River, but I'm glad to talk about Cross River, but I'm here yes. <laughs> for my... Let's, let, I, don't, I hope they don't do the, uh, do the election and I didn't have a chance to talk. <laughs> All right, uh, let, let's talk further. You're wearing two caps uh, as a leading member of the South-South Solidarity Group. Tell me, what are the aims the group seeks to achieve? We are a rainbow coalition of many different groups, not only uh, regional from the South-South, uh, but also national. Uh, you know, we just finished a busy political season, wild political season. Some people don't want it to end, and that's why your earlier questions will make sense. But uh, we just finished a wild political season, and um, I have been doing this now for at least three years. Uh, at least three years, we started our programs for this election at least three years ago. And I have met many, many people, many allies, many friends, and um, it's uh, every day your, uh, your, your uh, portfolio of, um, of, of uh, allies and friends will increase. So we are fortunate that um, this season many of us were prepared. And that's why as we come together again to do this onerous task of supporting our own, supporting um, the emergence of uh, the candidate from the South-South to appear and to uh, win at the end of the day the Senate presidency, we are ready. It's what we have done. Many of us are just a phone call away. We are ready. So let, let's talk about uh, the incoming administration. I would like to know what should Nigerians expect from the president-elect? 
Well, I, I, I can give you a thought or two, my own ideas, but really uh, the, uh, the presidency, uh, the presidential campaign uh, for one, and the presidency itself for sufficient uh, spokesmen that will speak on that. Um, I'm not going to be a jack of all trades. I'm here because of one endeavor, and that is to see that the best candidate who we believe is uh, Goswell at Pabio, will emerge as the next uh, president of the Senate of Nigeria. You have a candidate already? And he, in turn, he, in, turn. And he in turn will complement uh, the good work being done in every other area of the executive. All right, so let's talk about that. Uh, the lobbying for appointments and positions has begun, and a lot of people are already jostling for the Senate presidency. And some people say it's too early. Is it really too early, Mr. Joseph? It can't be too early. Uh, the inauguration is just around the corner. They've already, uh, I was uh, reading the news the other day, and they've already picked out the car. They've, they've cleaned the car, gassed the car that the, the, new, the new president will drive in. Uh, which one was more important, the Senate president or the car the, or the, our new president will ride in? I think that uh, we're, we're starting too late. Um, the, the other people that are, are vying or announce their interest to buy for the post, God bless them. We like that. We think that uh, it uh, shouldn't be an all-commerce affair, but the, best, but the best that this country has to offer should come forth. But also in this country, we believe in zoning. We believe in rotation. And the fact is, is that um, at least one of the key candidates uh, that has announced his, um, his ambition to, um, to jostle, because that's what it's going to take, to jostle for the seat of Senate president, um, is coming from a region, the part of the country that has had this pair eight individuals to only one who has had it from the South-South. There is no comparison. We're talking about justice. We're talking about equity. We're talking about fairness. So the, it, it, they, they should zone it and limit it to the South-South. And I think that if they did that, um, Nigerians already know who the next Senate president should be. But even if they want it to become an all-commerce affair, we still know who the next president should be because God's will of Pabio still stands head and shoulders above everyone else. And by the way, I, I, I didn't lead properly into my support for God's will of Pabio, but I think you know where I stand on, uh, on that anyway. All right, Mr. Wyers, I, I do not think Nigerians know, already know who the next uh, Senate president will be, but then... What attributes do you think Nigerians should look out for in all of these aspirants jostling uh, for the office of the Senate President? Um, I'm sorry, you threw me off with your, uh, your question that Nigerians don't already know. I don't know if you're new in the country, but if you've been reading the newspapers and the news for the last week or so, I think Nigerians have a very good idea who it should be. Uh, God's will, like Pabio, is a name that keeps recurring and recurring and recurring. So if you're, if you're new in the country, I welcome you back home. But in Nigeria today, we know who the next Senate president should be if our prayers are heard and answered. All right, so uh, once again, what attributes should Nigerians look out for in all of these aspirants, in whoever you think should become the next Senate president? Well, you, you can start with their track record. Um, somebody like Goswell at Pabio, um, yes, it's good he has experience, but what good is the experience if it doesn't, if, if, if it doesn't have uh, feats to show? We know that when he was um, governor of Akwaibom, for instance, uh, we know of the great feats that he did in that state. Uh, for instance, the best roads in Nigeria are in Akwaibom. He, he closed his eyes uh, and uh, took the bite and did the right thing. And today, eight years after he has left office, the roads in Akwaibom are still the best in the country. Um, 
We know also that his other great exploits, uh, particularly in capital projects, he changed the landscape as well as the skyscape of, um, of Akwaibo. Uh, if, if, if our Green Eagles want to play football, uh, their, their first choice is always, uh, is always Oyo Stadium. Um, he built in his own, um, in, in his own uh, senatorial zone, he built that uh, egg-shaped tower. Uh, the only other one that exists, I believe, is in, in England, is England. Uh, quite an engineering of prowess. At least the people of that region can hold their heads high and say we are, we can, we can stand and be counted. Um, there were there were lots of great feats that he did. He brought development to um, acquire bomb on a scale that had never been seen before. And we know that it was easy for his uh, successor to take off from where he has left. As it is in Cross River, it is easy for um, Senator Basio too to take off from where so um, God's will that Pabio has had antecedents as you know even as the minister of, um, of uh, the Niger Delta uh, ministry his handling of his handling of the, uh, of, of the of the Niger Delta area as a, as a minister was second to none um, I think we all remember um, uh, his his interview in, with uh, with the National Assembly when they wanted to uh, uh, probe or cross examine the ministry or um, or even um, the Niger the, the Niger Delta Commission on the activities that it was uh, that it was doing. Uh, we all remember how we, like students, we all sat down and got a tutorial in how to handle the National Assembly as a leader. He handled himself so well, we are still talking about it today. I mean, uh, it, it wasn't a question of, uh, of, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the hunter uh, being hunted. It was, it was, uh, turned, it was turned around. Um, and um, we know that given the dynamics of the uh, political the political life in Nigeria, we need someone with the kind of dexterity that uh, Pabio has, with the kind of ability that uh, Pabio, sorry, uh, Governor Pabio, Senator Pabio has. We, we, we need that. We need, uh, you know, if the house is on fire, we need somebody to be calm enough to get us to line, line up orderly and to, and to leave a blazing house and everybody is safe. Um, by the grace of God, Nigerian house will not be on fire, but I think you know what it means. We need people who are, who are level-headed. Uh, I think the term in, um, in, uh, in sports is GOAT, um, the greatest of all time. We need the people who are just great at that, are great at handling us, are great at addressing us, are great at leading us. That's what we need for this country. I can tell you that the last uh, Senate that was in session, um, more than half their leaders, uh, Nigerians will have trouble remembering who any of them were. And uh, not, not to say that they were not doing their work at all, but they could have done their work even better. All right, so I've been speaking with uh, Joseph Wires Jr., member APC, PCC, and leading member South South Solidarity Group, who are discussing South South's quest for Senate president. This discussion will continue after this break. Please stay with us. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TVC News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live at the aftermath of the approval of a new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. CVC News, first with breaking news. There is always more to a story than the screaming headline. 
The part of a story that is not told casts a shadow. It's like the part of an object that is not reached by light. On TVC News, I'm able to explore the many angles the rat was story, talking to stakeholders, asking the difficult questions and digging for facts. I believe the viewers are able to make a better decision if they're well informed and understand not just a part, but the complete story. TVC News, first with Breaking News. Welcome back to Politics Tonight, and I still have with me Joseph Wires Jr., member APC, PCC, and leading member South South Solidarity Group. Tonight on the program, we're looking at South South Quest for Senate presidency. All right, Mr. Wires, now I know you have a candidate uh, in Gotula Pabio, but because be, becoming the Senate president, but for the basis of this conversation, let me remind you uh, that there are other aspirants who have shown interest in becoming the Senate president. We have um, Oji Zokalu from Southeast, Barao John, Sani Musa, uh, Devu Mahi, and a host of other persons. So it is important also that uh, we also take a look at this other aspirant as we analyze this discussion. So let's move on. The APC said it is yet to zone positions for the next uh, pres uh, Senate presidency. So I'm asking, can the NWC and the NEC be relied upon to take the right decision? Well, well to begin with, um, uh you yourself, when you were introducing the program, you spoke of ranking senators. So when we are speaking about ranking senators, I think more than half of the people you mentioned, we can dismiss them from the list because they are very good politicians. I'm a big fan of Dave Umani, for example. Um, and we know that Adam Sashimole has also been mentioned. But it has never happened in our history. Nor has it happened, I think, in the history of other democracies, that the important post of Senate president is given to a first-timer, is given to a freshman. It, it has never happened. Um, I think that uh, we can, using history as our guide, as our teacher, uh, focus on those who are going to be, who are, who are qualified to run for Senate president in the first place. And I and I want to say that. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's back again to the facts I've already mentioned to you. Um, the East, uh, Oji Kahlo, um, you know, a uh, fantastic, wonderful leader, dynamic personality, but he's from the East, and the East has already produced eight, eight candidates. I think that uh, uh, Oji Kahlo should play the role of supporters. I, you know, my, my dad was uh, Senate president back in the day, and he was uh, even younger than I was. And, and, he, and he told me from time to time, he said, son, I wouldn't have been Senate president had not this person, had not that person, uh, you know, took me by the hand and had helped me ascend to that post. And some of the names uh, I won't tell you because uh, uh, it's not part of what we are here for, but when I get to see... Of, of such gentlemen, I always tell them those words that my father told me, that son, uh, if not for this man, if not for this person, I wouldn't have been Senate president. So I think that in that case, people like Oji Kalu, uh, we, want them, we want to see them play a supportive role so that their brothers from the South-South will realize the ambition that we have set in our hearts for a candidate like Oswell at Pabio. We don't, we, we, we don't think that it is uh, something that needs to be bickered about, uh, debated about uh, too, too much. Um, if, when it comes to qualifications, there's nobody that stands taller than at Pabio. But I understand, maybe to make the race interesting, but then you'll have to look in the South-South. And I don't think... Uh, at least in this time around, we, we, there's enough time to find somebody that will suitably qualify. All right, so uh, given uh, the challenge of neutralizing uh, religious tension in the country, is zoning the way forward? Well, uh, we know that the uh, major two positions 
major two positions, uh, the first and the second position in, in politics. In politics, sorry, I, I, I had put my phone on. Uh, I had put my phone on. Uh, yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry about that. So we know that um, the uh, first two positions, the first two major positions in um, our political uh, dynasty, if you like, is uh, has has gone to two notable men. Um, uh, Siwaju is the president elect, and uh, Shatima, who is the vice president elect. It so happens that they are also Muslims. As I said somewhere else before, they are not first Muslims, but they are also, in this case, Muslims. We think that um, being that Nigeria um, is a country where these things matter, we, we are a country where um, the Christian population is, is, uh, is large, and we know that the uh, Muslim population is, is large too. Um, some argue even larger than the Christian population. We, we know that it's a, it, it will be good if the next Senate president, uh, being that the first two spots have gone to Muslims, president to lead the Senate. But it's also it's just a nice thing to have. You know, um, if you ask a woman, what does she like about football A, t sorry, uh, team A or team B? She will tell you that she likes the legs or she likes the socks or something. And, you know, we, we who are men, we know that uh, the, the legs and the socks have nothing whatsoever to do with football. But if that's how uh, women are going to join us at the, in the living room as we watch the next game of football, well, then so be it. Uh, let them look at their socks and let them look at their legs. Um, so for those that judge Nigeria or look at Nigeria in hopeful ways, I think that this is a good idea if the next Senate president um, should be also a Christian. Not that he should be a Christian, but he should also be a Christian in the sense that he should first be other, other things. He should be, he should be eminently qualified in other areas first. But it helps if he's also a Christian. So uh, the South-South region is making strong claims to the Senate presidency, just like you have uh, for the better part of this uh, program tonight. Why do you people think it's your turn? You people. Why don't you say your yes. brothers and sisters? South-South region. We are not you people. <laughs> yes. Um, no, we, we, um, we, we know how good it was when it happened before. Nigeria knows how good it was when it has happened before. We have found in Goswell Apabio a man that will remind us of days gone by, nostalgic days that have gone by. And I think it's not just for the South-South, but, but equally for the rest, the North, the South, the East, and the West. Um, my late father has, uh, has so much support from around this country, in particular in the north, they remember how good things were at that time. And we are saying that for the good days to come back, let us consider the man of Goswell Akpabio for the post of Senate president. Mr. Joseph, so uh, do you think um, eligible candidates for the Senate presidency from the South-South have the numbers to clinch the position when it's time for the election in the 10th Senate? Uh, well, it's not going to quite go like that. It's not going to quite go like that. Um, we, we have seen already that we have a president-elect who they, the of all of us, because the way that race is won, it is holistic. Uh, so I, I think the support for Akpabio is universal. Let's not forget because um, it's been quite a while since this country has had any form of unrest from the South-South. Let's not forget that the South-South is a place that when they catch, when they sneeze, the country catches a cold. It will be good to uh, keep the South-South in a manner and way that will, will keep the health, keep the peace, keep the joy 
keep the wealth, keep things going well in Nigeria, it's, it will be good. It will be good, and it is time. So, some analysts also say uh, the Southeast and the South South have been a presidency. I would like you to react to that. No, you, you, you can't say that. In, in the Kwabio's case, for example, uh, um, when he was the first person to step down Obola Tinubu at the uh, primaries, the result was that not only did he step down, but he took along with him every single delegate from Akwaibom. They all voted in unison for the next president of Nigeria. You cannot belittle those, those contributions and call them trite. Uh, back to my own state, for example. Um, I remember um, all the pundits were saying two years ago, as recently as two years ago, that Cross River is, a, is the sole preserve of the opposition party uh, PDP. And we've known, we've seen that just in two years, how our governor has turned that situation around. At his own cost, he ought to have been there in the Senate too. But you know he was, by extension, the South-South leader of the party. He did a good job making sure that the party uh, showed a, a very good uh, footing and a very good, um, a very good outing in these last elections. And um, uh, as, as you have reminded all of us before, he also uh, delivered his state when it came to the governor of the state when it was boasted, boasted that it, by the opposition party that it couldn't be done. He did it. So um, we are still uh, uh, growing up, but we have, uh, we have gone past the infant age. I think it is time now that with a leader like um, Pabio, that the party beyond the horizon, conquering fully, once and for all, South-South. Politics is dynamic. And every day you have to make new, new allies, new friends. And we see the South-South as, I mean, the, the trajectory. Already they are pointing in that direction of APC, the rest of the South-South. And they will follow suit. They will follow suit. All right, so I'm sure you know all this still depends on the zoning arrangements by the APC. But how will the zone react if the position is not zoned to the South-South? Well, um, the other day, I, I got up to go to the uh, fridge to get, a, get some cold water to drink. And my wife was praying. And not that I normally listen to what she's praying, but this time she was praying for God's will at Pabio. That God will make God's will at Pabio the next Senate president. And if you know my wife's record when it comes to praying... I don't need to entertain the option that there will not be a gospel of Pabio as the next Senate president. Uh, she is praying for him already, and I know that by the grace of God, others Nigerians will do so too. Uh, we don't have to talk about what will not happen. We, we just have to be expectant about what will happen by the grace of God. All right, so again, how will you react if the APC does not zone this to the south-south? What are we doing? We, we, we are knocking on doors. We are, we, are, um, we are picking up our phones. We're dialing numbers. We are influencing the influencers. You are here having to deal, having, having to put up with me for how long now? I'm just saying gospel of Pabio, gospel of Pabio, gospel of Pabio. You, 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 you know, at the end of the day, why not? Nigerians like a happy story. Uh, sorry, a, a story with a happy ending. The happy ending that will come forth uh, after the inauguration of Mr. President will be uh, the, that gospel of Pabio will win, that all other opposition will, 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 will not, will, will, will sit and join, and join all of us uh, supporting his candidacy so that it will be something that it was clear everyone wanted, which is what we believe. Everyone wants this. Everyone wants this.
right, uh, Mr. Joseph, you know, um, if this is not zoned to the south-south, there is no way your region can contest. So let me ask you, are you ready to work hand-in-hand -hand with other candidates from other, other regions? Well, I'm fortunate to know a um, few of the contestants. So it's not that I'm afraid of somebody else's candidacy. Honestly, this is my country, and I wish the best for it. Uh, and we are not talking about uh, moderate options here. We're not talking about uh, second best here. We are trying to focus on what will be best for Nigeria. And if that is the case, um, I don't know if you remember the days when the last Senate president was from the South-South, but it was good days for Nigeria. It was good days for Nigeria. Even the, even the opposition parties enjoyed it. It was good days for Nigeria. So we're calling for those days to come back. And we believe that the man of Gospel of Pablo has the capacity to bring it back. I'll tell you a story if I can. Um, long before I met Pablo, I, I, went, uh, I went with my wife, then girlfriend, to uh, shopping in, um, in one of the new malls. And um, I think it was when I was leaving, I saw a lot of commotion. There were a lot of things. Uh, people were jostling. Pe people were, there was some excitement, some, 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 some uh, electricity in the air. So before you know it, um, you saw God's will walking towards, God's will like Fabio walking towards the, um, the, uh, the new shopping center, which was still some distance off. Apparently, his cars couldn't get through uh, the blockade of other cars. So he, so he was walking the rest of the distance. And because he's a man that I've always loved, I, when I saw him, I, I left my wife and, um, and approached him. And as I, as I got close to him, his uh, security, his security kind of, you, you know, waved me off like, that's too close, you can stay a step or two away. And he stopped the security from waving me off, and he beckoned me to, to join him. And when I joined him, this man held my hand as he walked from where my car had been parked all the way to, all, all the, way to the building of the new mall he came to visit. Um, that is leadership. That is leadership. He didn't know me from Adam. He, did, he didn't know me from Adam, but he took my hand and walked me, and we joked, and we talked, etc. Um, that, those are signs of good leaders. Those are the lead type of leaders Nigerians love. And that is the one we want, to sit in the seat of President of the Senate of Nigeria. That's a personal experience. But let's talk about him one more time. So, because of the times you are in, and how important it is for us all to come together to protect our democracy. Now, do you agree with me that while choosing the leadership of the National Assembly is important for the party to take into cognizance personalities with unquestionable character? I'd like to know, uh, is your candidate, Senator Godwill Akpabio, uh, a man of good standing when it comes to character and public office? Well, of, uh, um, even I, uh, sitting here before you, uh, it will be hard for you to tell my character. Um, I, uh, I think that the, the work of politics is a work that it is not for, um, it's not a, a work for, for those who are not strong, who are not tough, and who don't know to do what it takes that the country can move forward. So, so um, yes, I attest to the character of God's will of Pablo as it relates to his work as a leader of this country, as it as it attests, as it relates to the work of his uh, of his work as a leader of this country. He has been first grade. It takes a good leader. It takes a fantastic leader, a man of incredible character, to step down, to step down, so the process can begin and Nigeria will pick her next presidency. He was the first person to do that. And, and, and uh, we should clap for him. We should honor him. Uh, which, it, it, he did it, and others saw how it is done, and before long, others followed his example. 
That's a leader. A leader is somebody who sets the pace and sets the example that others will follow. All right. Now, many years ago, your dad, uh, Joseph Vias, was Senate president. What memories do you have? Um, like I said, those were good days for Nigeria. My dad, uh, my dad was, um, was my teacher. My dad was my teacher. He taught me everything I know about life, including uh, what I know about politics. Uh, he taught me everything. Um, funny, if you study the Bible and you look at, uh, you, you look at uh, Proverbs, for example, you go from chapter 1 down to the end, chapter 31, I think it is, uh, you, should, you should ask yourself, why was Solomon chosen to succeed David? Solomon was not the eldest son, at least in terms of ranking. But if you, if you look at the inferences and the hints and the suggestions throughout the book of uh, Proverbs, you will learn that Solomon, not sons, but son. You, you know, so I would say that my father's influence on me is, um, is, is, is for life. Uh, it, it open, it's door opening. I can tell you that even at my age, <laughs> I'm, I'm many years, I'm, I'm, I'm more than 20 years older than my dad when he was Senate president, but even this program, God bless you, introduced me as the son of Dr. Joseph Wyeth. It's a blessing. The Bible says that a good man will leave an inheritance for his children's children. My dad has left a name that will go on and on uh, long after even I have gone. And this is the, and this is the time to do it again. Let's do this thing again. And that's why we should choose God's will at Fabio. And it will be done. Presidential election. Why is this still generating bitter reaction from by some opposition politicians, in your view? If you were here eight years ago, it was the same thing. If you were here 16 years ago, it was the same thing. If you were here 24 years ago, it was the same thing. Nigerians are very competitive people. And uh, we put our all into the endeavors that we choose. And when it doesn't go quite our way, um, because we have been operating at our full maximum capacity, we are hot, we are we're a little bit agitated, it will take time for people to, to, to slow down uh, and come back to and come back to the proper speed of things. Um, there's nothing wrong with Nigeria. Uh, we've heard all the hue and cry. It's what goes on in Nigeria after every political season. It will happen again and again. Imagine some people in my state, as, as happy as the most people in the state are, some people will say, no, we don't want sweetness. We want bitterness. So what do you do? Uh, in Nigeria, we have, we have to make room for all. So, uh, yes, the election has come and gone, but how will you rate the performance of INEC in the election? Well, I don't have uh, much information to go by. I know that INEC uh, tried every time to improve upon itself and do better than it did before, and it came a time before the presidential elections when people were, where people were generally saying that INEC has done well in this election or that election. And I don't think it should be any different in this, this time around. Um, as it so happens, uh, as this government was chasing the, uh, the criminals, the crimes, uh, the, uh, the uh, mantra that, uh, or, the, or the motto that, that, that we learned came as a result of that was that crime is fighting back. So as it so happens, as INEC was improving upon itself, trying to deliver to us the best elections, well, those crooked politicians, they were fighting back. They were fighting back. That is not the doing of INEC. Uh, that is just innate in the character of a criminal. And um, by the grace of God, INEC will do even better the next election but we, have to, but we have to acknowledge that as we have come this far, INEC has tried. They have done the best they could considering the situation. All right, so 
The PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, and that of Labour Party, Peter Obi, have challenged the outcome in court, and there are also threats of street protest. Is this really desirable? Well, the, 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 they have their... It's, it's perfectly within their rights to, to, um, to go to court. Uh, they were advised by even our party... Our party leaders go to court if you have any trouble with uh, with the election outcome. So um, I think that it only follows that um, as the minority have had their say, that we should be happy that the majority have had their way, and that's going to be even in court. Even in court, they will go to court and they will and they will bring their case. And by the grace of God. Um, the winner will still be left standing. But we also uh, have some of I these mean, um, uh, aggrieved people uh, calling uh, for interim government. How will you respond to this? Well, I don't think those are people that have been paying attention. Um, there's nothing in, our, in the provision of our laws for interim government. Uh, it, is, um, it is a fantasy. It is a delusion. Uh, it, is, it is the ultimate of bad sportsmanship uh, to say that if you cannot have it, then nobody can have it. All those things are, are wrong. And, and if you see anybody like that next to you, run, run, leave him, leave him, leave her. This country belongs to all of us. And this election, and this election, is, uh, is not going to define who we are individually. So we don't need, but, but if we quit now, if we quit now and entertain ideas which are ludicrous, well, I think that it's, it's, only, a, it's only a matter of time so, Mr. before Joseph, people say that seconds, we are not really ready. What are your ready. expectations from a Tinubu presidency? What are your expectations from a Tinubu presidency? In 30 seconds. I'm expecting the best of times for Nigeria. I'm expecting the, the, uh, the fruitfulness of a man who gave all, worked and worked hard to attain what he has. And by the grace of God, I think it's a testimony that the rest of us will wish to have one day. That when we work hard for what we want, that ultimately God will give it to us. And we will have the chance to excel in doing what we do best. All right. It is indeed a pleasure having you, Dorothy Group, and we discuss the South South Quest for Senate Presidency tonight on Politics Tonight. Thank you very much for coming on the program, and we look forward to more conversation with you in the nearest uh, future. Thank you, too, for having me. And thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at Stevenson News NG and at Olajumoke O using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Stevenson News Nigeria. Join us for the repeat episode at midnight and tomorrow for another edition of Politics Tonight. Dig and beyond the headlines. I am Olajumoke Ol The heat of the summer. Okada seats feel like hot plates and downfall buses feel like extremely hot ovens. Walking on the road feels like walking on hot coals. How do I cope with this heat? Mm, and how do I cope with that bad odor?